Blog Talk Radio. You are listening to the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Welcome to Earth Sky People Radio. Living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society. With your host, Victoria Vives, founder of Reiki Wellbeing and co-founder of the Earth Sky People Movement. Hello, this is Earth Sky People Radio with your host, Victoria Vives. You can find me at victoriavives.com. Today is Tuesday, September 30th, 2014. And whatever you are around the world, let's take a moment to tune in with each other. I would like for you to imagine that you are a beautiful tree with beautiful roots coming down into the earth, helping you feel in grounded, stable, helping you receiving nourishment from Mother Earth. And see how this beautiful, powerful nourishment is coming up from your roots into your legs, your torso, and from there it's stretching up into the heavens, into beautiful branches that reach the spiritual realms. And in this way, you are connected with both heaven and earth. And imagine each of us around the world gaining this awareness of our interconnectedness with both the earth and the sky. You can see yourself shining beautiful light all around you. Breathing deeply in and out. And take one more deep cleansing breath. And you can slowly open your eyes. (laughs) So we are here together in Earth Sky People Radio. Earth is representing our connection with Mother Earth and nature, and sky representing spiritual life and life beyond the Earth, extraterrestrial, extradimensional. Last week, we shared space with Sandra Ingerman with the Water Transfiguration Ceremony. And if you would like to listen to the replay, check out the archives at victoriavives.com forward slash radio. And today we have a special channeling session and Q&A with Daniel Scranton. Daniel Scranton, as you, I imagine, already know, is part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. He has a show on Monday, so make sure to check that out. And this session of channeling with Daniel Scranton is going to be about embodying a star energy on Earth. And you can start calling now if you want to ask questions, because then all the questions cannot be answered, maybe. (laughs) So just call at 347-215-8586 and press 1, just to make sure that your question is answered. Okay, so Daniel Scranton has been a verbal channel since 2010. He has done dozens of live and online group events and private sessions with people all over the globe. The creators are a group of entities who have contracted to work with Daniel in guiding us through the exciting and turbulent times we are experiencing at this time. Daniel's website is www.danielscranton.com. And now (laughs) we welcome Daniel Scranton. Hi, Daniel. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Hi. It's so wonderful to to hear your happy voice. Oh, it's so great to be here. I'm so honored and pleased to be uh, a guest on someone's radio show. That's that's really a a treat for me. 
Oh, how nice. And I remember that I was on your show, too, and then we did the International Chanting for Peace together. So yes. I, yeah, so exciting. <laughs> okay, yeah. so um, the first thing I would like to know is how, how was that you started in channeling? Was this like a, a spiritual awakening or you always felt that connection and just didn't try it before 2010? Well, it's um, well. I'll give you the long version of the story, which is that uh, you know I was attending a lot of other people's events where they were channeling, and I was reading books that were channeled, and I was just really, really into whatever channeled material I could get my hands on. Uh, I was absorbing, 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 and I was one of these people who would go to just an enormous number of Abraham Hicks events all over the world, cruises, I would travel to see them. So I feel like I was getting I was getting the upgrades and all that that I needed by being in the presence of other people who were channeling, but never with the intention of channeling myself. That was hmm. not what I was there for. I was I would have been super happy to have hooked up with a woman who would have been the channel and I would have been the, the Jerry Hicks asking all the questions. But uh, mm-hmm. that's not how it played out for me. I uh, <laughs> Instead, <laughs> I, I had this experience. Uh, it was actually the, the very first experience that I had that I think led to my channeling was on an Abraham Hicks cruise where I mm-hmm. offered to give someone Reiki and I started to give her Reiki and oh, wow. it was this like feeling that I got in my body almost like like a download or just you know this mm-hmm. energetic like orgasm that was happening in my body and and I noticed wow. that after I noticed at a certain point that my hands were not on her anymore and I asked her if she moved during the session and she said no and so mm-hmm. I you know that was the first time I I noticed that my hands had moved by themselves. So then I started to get really, really into doing energy work on people. I just just wanted to do it. I didn't care if they even knew I was doing it on them. I would do it from a distance. I I would, you know, just, I, I had a massage therapist that I was seeing regularly. So I would do energy work on her before she would work on me. And when I was doing energy work on her, Again, my hands raised off of her just by themselves. And then one Mm -hmm. would start to move like a windshield wiper back and forth. And then it would stop eventually. And then the other one would move like a windshield wiper. And then my head started to move (laughs) like Stevie Wonder in the figure eight. (laughs) And then my lips started moving. And when my lips started moving, there were this like whispering sounds and I thought, wow, I'm really going to channel something verbally here. And so wow. that was the first moment when I when I thought that I could channel verbally. So wow. that, this is early, early 2010 now. And then so in March of 2010, I had this really amazing experience. In the middle of the night, I went to sleep and... At a certain point, I had a dream, and in the dream, all I was doing was um, standing in a very open space with a guy that I knew from Abraham Hicks Cruises, and I said to him, I understand now about the other beings. And I woke up from that dream, I woke up from that dream, and I felt a chill in the air, and I was like, you know, this is March, so yeah, it could be chilly, we didn't have the heat on or anything, and (laughs) <laughs> and then uh, I rec- I realized it wasn't a chill in the air. I was I was receiving energy and I was I was downloading it from my head. So it moved through the crown of my head all the way down to my feet. In a sh- like, if you can imagine what it looks like when you're copying a piece of paper and you see that light moving like really slow across the mm. paper, scanning it. That's kind of what it was like for me. But it was this 
unbelievably orgasmic energy that made me just like I, I can't even really describe how how good it felt because it was beyond anything that that I've ever felt before or since, and I just wow. was was just saying, "Oh my God, oh my God, oh my <laughs> God!" while it was happening. And then eventually I, I said to myself, I wonder what this has to do with that dream. I, and I said, I wonder if this has something to do with aliens. And I got this hmm. huge surge of energy when I said the word aliens. And so oh, then I would wow. say it over and over and over and over until so I keep getting it. And then I started talking to them and asking them questions. And if the answer was yes, I would, I would receive a... Um, a surge of that energy, that orgasmic energy. So I I played with them for a little while, and then I thought, well, this whole time my eyes have been closed. I thought, what if I can see them? So I took my eye mask off, and I opened my eyes, and as soon as I opened my eyes, I just started getting, the, like, these huge surges again. So it was like mm-hmm. the energy kind of, you know, would go in – it would lower in intensity and then I would do something like that and the, and the energy would increase in intensity and I'd get all this orgasmic energy and I kept begging them for more of it and more of it and more of it. Oh. And finally, finally it stopped. And I have no idea how long this was happening for. All I wow. knew was that it was like two, or between 2 and 3 a.m. and I had to get out of bed. Like I just, you know, it's wide awake. Oh. <laughs> I got up. I Skyped with my friend in Holland because I figured that was the only person that I knew who'd be awake and told mm-hmm. her about it. And, and then from that point on, I just became really, really obsessed with uh, energy in my body and feeling energy in my body. And um, um, I, I meditated for hours every day. And, and I would have these really intense meditations where I would – feel like I was going to throw up, but not just feeling nauseous, but actually the physical sensation of my body that's called dry heaving. So my body would make like I was throwing up, but nothing would come out. And um, and I I actually experienced that at an Abraham Hicks seminar that I was attending because I was tuning in to my own, you know, I I was all about just feeling the energy now and, and uh, and, and I had that experience during their seminar. So so I, I said to one of my friends that night, I said, I hope, you know, I didn't disturb you at the at the workshop when I was dry heaving. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, what, what was that about? And uh, so I told her and we got gathered, m- me and her and like three other friends gathered in, a, in one of the hotel rooms and they all sat around like, like I was the channel and they were all the people sitting in the room with questions. And I just experienced a lot of dry heaving, a lot of movement. My, my head and neck and face and everything would just, you know, move a lot, but no Mm. words, no, I don't even think sounds at this point were coming out. Um, so they all, they all said to me, you got to ask Abraham about this. So I, I did the next day and I had the experience Mm. once again, of my arm raising itself to get called on to be to be in the hot seat with Abraham, and this mm-hmm. whole thing happens like happened really slowly, and it was while one of my really good friends was sitting up there in the hot seat. So that by the time she got out, my my hand all the way up, and of course I'm getting chills all up and down, and and Abraham calls on me, and I get up there and I tell him everything that's going on. And they say, yes, you're you're becoming a channel, and it's something that you have resistance to. So you need to work through that resistance. And the only way to do that is to is to do it. So as it turns mm. out, I I had this this fiance at the time who was living in England, and she and I would Skype four times a week and for four to six hours at a time. So during wow. every one of our Skype sessions we would spend about 45 minutes with me going into the channeling state, which I which I was able to go into easily, but I wasn't mm. speaking. And I wasn't, you know, like I said, I can't even remember at, at first if there was any sound coming out, but eventually I started to 
make sounds that sounded like, you know, letters of the alphabet, and then eventually I spoke, and that is how the creators were born, essentially, with me anyway. (laughs) Wow, how exciting. And now that you mentioned the creators, I would like to hear more about who are the creators, how is your relationship with them? Okay. Um, Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because at first... I didn't get that name, the creators. I didn't get a name at all, and I asked for a name, and I asked for a name. And, again, I'm on an Abraham cruise while I'm doing this. It's just so funny how (laughs) how much that was like a part of my life. I'm on their cruise, and I'm asking for a name. I asked for a name. Finally, what came out of me was pick a friggin'. And I said it like over and over and over again, or they said it, pick a friggin', pick a friggin', pick a friggin', pick a friggin'. So I was like, okay. (laughs) I'll just pick the name that, you know, my at this point my former fiancé, because we didn't stay together, she called them Grandpa. And so I oh. we called them Grandpa for a while. And then and then eventually, you know, I, I really wanted to know their name, their origin, all that stuff. So I did some automatic writing, and I got the name The Creators. And then I got immediate uh, confirmation um, from... Some you know, just seeing the word creator online in in a place where I didn't you know I was looking for Legos. I was looking online for Legos to buy on eBay, and there's these Lego sets called creator sets, and I was like, whoa, that is just such a weird synchronicity <laughs> that that I got the right name. So, so creators are essentially universal architects. So they are beings who are very interested in creating worlds, creating galaxies, creating universes, that sort of thing. They they have also um, the name universal architect could be applied to the creators. Um, nice. They are non-physical beings of the highest dimension or density that you can get. So in dimension, we would say they're 12th, and in density, that equals 7th. Because some people like density, some people like dimension. It's just, they're the same thing. It's just different frequency ranges, and they're right up there with the archangels and and you know uh, Yeshua and the, the other twelve dimensional beings. Wow! They're How basically they're, they're basically just here to serve. They're here to teach. They're they're uh, like you know because they're not singular. My one of my future selves is a part of the creators, and other mm-hmm. people that I know also have uh, future selves that are part of the creators. Um, and you know, I it's hard to quantify. I don't think you can really put a number on how many beings there are. I I think uh, our minds really want that type of information, but it's not. Give it a number would would be to do it as a disservice <laughs> or an injustice, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and how about physical form? Nothing physical, quasi physical, or pure light? How how is their presence? When do you, how do you experience them? Well, I've always experienced them as energy in my body. So mm-hmm. I I've never seen any form that. The in beings in those in the twelfth dimension, they don't have physical form. They're complete non physical. There's not there's no substance there to to incarnate uh your consciousness into. It's just pure consciousness. But um but they can of course be interpreted through our visual sensors, our eyes, because our eyes are essentially the way we are interpreting energy or vibration um, visually. And so I have had people see them as two different people at the same workshop said they were appearing as a green kind of gassy substance over my right shoulder, I think it was. Hmm, So they have kind of appeared in that way to people and I, I've heard Esther tell a story, too, of how Abraham, you know, appeared to her once as all these different lights in the room, and yeah. then the lights 
other in, in one light and you know so so it's possible to to have like a representation but they're not they're not incarnating which you know I'm incarnate so right. so like I'm the I'm the representative of the creators and I'm sure there are others too mm, beautiful and sound is one of the things that connects you with them right Sound the the sound journey is another funny story. So, <laughs> so I got you know I got back from one of the many Abraham cruises I was on, and and I remember it was it was after that that I started to say, sing and ring, ring and sing, singing and ringing, mm-hmm. ring singing, some combination of the two words sing and ring. Over and over and over. Oh, I don't even wow. know how many times I said those two words while mm. in the channeling state. So eventually, it took several months, but eventually I said, okay, I think I should maybe take voice lessons. So I started <laughs> take voice nice. lessons from my teacher whose uh, studio was called Singing for Your Soul. So that obviously attracted me to her. And yeah. and her uh, studio, and she's still a friend to this day. This was, you know, this was back in early 2011, and um, and I and for the for a while I would just pick song. You know, she would train me like anybody else, and I told her my, you know, why I was there and everything. But I would just sing songs and and work with the, you know, like matching the notes on the piano with my voice and all that stuff. But um, eventually, she said to me, "What do you want to do some uh, toning before, uh, like a chakra toning meditation uh, that she learned from Jonathan Goldman, who's a very famous, oh, you know, overtone yeah. singer. You know, he's healer, uh, does all that stuff. So we did the, we would do the seven chakra. In fact, that's what I did at the chanting for peace. I did that. That um, I remember." <laughs> toning, yeah, that I learned from her way back when, and um, and and eventually I I also got into some channeling by Wendy Kennedy. Uh, she channels the Pleiadians, and they mm. talked all about the power of tones and sounds and overtones and you know uh, all the different things that have been done throughout uh, human history with sound how the universe was created with sound, all this amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I go to my teacher and I say, I want to learn how to overtone. And she said, yeah, that would be awesome. The only problem is I don't know how to do it. So, Mm -hmm. so like, I I eventually just started to channel the overtones. You know, (laughs) I had this, you know, I've gone through this uh, evolution with my, channeling where at a certain at at the very early stages I could go right in and be speaking for the creators in like no time and then I got to a point where it would take me 10 minutes of making sounds and uh, (laughs) sing and ring or some other language that I would speak and all this you know gyrations and stuff for all like up to 10 minutes it would take and then it got to the point where when I started the toning and the overtoning, it got da- it got down to like three and, and I'm there and they're there. You know, like it just, but you know, it, it's also, it's funny because the tones over time have gotten longer because my lung capacity has gotten increased <laughs> over all these years of toning now to where right. you know, each tone is almost a minute in length, and um, yeah, so so it's uh, it's part of the transmission. It's it they're they're channeled. They're not. Uh, it's not something I I knew how to do, and just decided like this was going to be the thing that I did to to connect. <laughs> it's something that started to happen, and all the best things in life uh-huh. happen that way, you know. Wow, and you mentioned about your lung capacity. And I know for a fact that you take very good care to your, of yourself, right? Yeah. In general, like with 
food and going hiking and you look much uh, much younger than you are and you know <laughs> <laughs> so was Thank that you. something that motivated you to be so you always have been like that well it's funny because it's very related to my spirit my uh, spirituality in, in the sense oh. that okay so before all of this, before Abraham and before all the channeled books and, and Seth and everything else I was into, I was a card-carrying atheist. Now, I was not one of these atheists that was proud of being an atheist. Like, I wasn't, you know, championing my atheism. I was just, that was what I believed. And I, I didn't actually like the feeling that... uh Someday I would just be dead and be buried in the ground, but that's all I could believe, you know, and th- that's where I was. So so from that place, you know, I um, I wasn't searching. I, I wasn't looking for any type of uh, answers or anything like that. I was just living my life as a human and trying not to think about the, you know, future where I would be dead someday in the ground. And... Um, <laughs> I had this boss, and my boss says, uh, you know, I want everybody in my company to listen to Tony Robbins' Personal Power 2. Oh. I was like, okay, I'll listen to it. But I listened to the first, there were like, it was like 25 interviews or something. You know, there's there's a lot of different uh, interviews, and these were on CD. And so I got through, there were 12 of these little double CD cases and I got to the last one, and I almost returned them uh, to my boss uh, at a barbecue that he threw, but I totally forgot to bring them. And then I, I realized that the last, uh, uh, the 12th uh, double CD case was actually a triple, and it contained um, another CD that I hadn't seen that had Deepak Chopra's interview on it. So I popped in the Deepak Chopra in- interview, and I'm listening to it, and I'm, th- at this point I'm already raw fooder. So I, I, w- I was into raw food basically because I wanted to look good. You know, like it was total vanity. It was just like I, I don't – I'd rather, I'd rather eat the best food that I can than, than work out more or, you know, do more <laughs> cardio or whatever. So, you know, I was always tweaking my, my diet to, to what I thought was the best that I possibly could eat because then I don't have to work out as much. Um, so so, so I, that's how I found raw food. But it was because I was into raw food that I was into natural healing and and uh, what's called natural hygiene and all, all these different things that I had read about on the raw foods message boards. And what Deepak was saying was really resonating with all that. So, of course, yeah. I was really resonating with Deepak, and I was like, I, I kind of like this guy. And, it, again, <laughs> with no intention of finding a spiritual teacher, I just started going to the library and taking out Deepak Chopra stuff and bringing it home and listening to it and reading it. And before you know it, the guy had me convinced there's way more going on here than my two heroes, Freud and Darwin, would, you know, talk about <laughs> Uh, so that's basically everything he said about the quantum universe, about the universe, about all of it just made so much sense yeah. to me. It, it appealed to my logical mind. And from there, you know, I was down the rabbit hole, as they say. Nice. Okay, so yeah. three tips for our listeners so that they feel inspired to to have a healthier lifestyle. Which are the three top things that you would recommend? Three things? Yes. Um, drink lots of spring water or well water. Um, mm. I, For me, personally, I have a very, very refined taste when it comes to water. I, So I even go for, or mineral water. I go for water that's in a glass bottle or that comes right out of the ground. There, believe it or not, there are places in the U.S. where you can go and get spring water that's coming right out of the ground. You don't even have to go to the store. There's a place in Sedona that I've been to where it just flows all day. There's a map um, 
it's a website. It's called like findaspring.com or something like that. But if you just type in Google, find a cold spring United States, mm-hmm. you'll find the website. And you can get water. At, we have a well in Ojai where we get our water, and I get it in, in glass bottles because to me it's really, it's you know, it's what could be more important than, you know, your body. Right. Water in it that's pure, that hasn't been, you know, put anything in it and then you know and then you have to get a filter to take it out you know like I don't like to play that game because mm-hmm. it still doesn't taste right to me even when we when I do so so I get the water um that I that I can taste is the most pure uh natural water and drink tons of it you know like uh, you just yeah. just have water with you all the time and and um they say at least 3 liters I live in a really dry climate and I drink 7 to 10 a day. And oh, my that's, goodness. <laughs> that's on top of that's on top of eating all organic and all raw, which is um, oh a very hydrating diet. As you know, like I have to force myself to get salt in my diet because they're you know mostly what I'm eating are fruits, vegetables, and and unsalted, unroasted raw nuts. So wow. So I actually just ate some uh, some kale chips that you know that I bought at Raw Food World here in Ojai and, uh, you know, that that gave me some salt. And I, I can actually feel, because salt helps you to um, hold on to the water that and, and all the, you know, water from the fruits and vegetables that you're taking in. So it helps your body to to absorb more of it. You know, there's yeah. there's this balance that we want to reach. So so water, that's, that's the first thing. Sure. Um, sure. I also think it's, in my opinion, it's really important to eat organic. Eat, eat food that's yeah. either organically grown, or if you get it from the farmer's market, talk to the farmer and ask the farmer, uh, how, is, how do you grow this? Like, what do you put chemicals in the ground, or do you spray it with, with chemical pesticides? Or because some of them are not, re- some of them are not uh, getting organic certification because it's very expensive. So right. some people are coming up with creative ways. Of, of you know saying like we're sustainable or we you know no chemicals or something like that and sometimes their food is even better than the ones who are growing <laughs> organically so so if you can get to a farmer's market and get your food there and get it grown organically and sustainably and whatever that I think is really important I mean it's important to me I'm not saying everyone else has to do that or believe that or you know but um, I can tell you know how I by how I feel whether something is, yeah. is good for me or not, and this mm-hmm. is what this is what my body wants. This is what I want, and it's it's still I'm uh, you know I'm still a a vain person who wants to look good and spends way too much time <laughs> thinking about that. But uh, <laughs> but in, you know I say that, and at the same time I can release some of my judgment of that now because I see how it serves me. I see how things in my life that could be looked at as, uh, you know, a detriment or a negative thing or whatever, have, <laughs> they've served me in getting me to do things that are ultimately really good for me. Because as a channel, I I feel like my body needs to be tuned really well. The The vehicle needs, you know, to have the, the right amount of hydration to because water is really important for conducting energy. So it's really important for me to to be as I am and, you know, and I can smile at myself uh, <laughs> recognizing that it comes from a place of just wanting to look really good, you know, just wanting to be able to walk down the beach with my shirt off and feel good, you know. Um, but I... So, <laughs> so the next thing I would say... And and this one's a tricky one because initially what what came right to my head was and this will be number three was breathing like the importance of breathing. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, one of the things that I remember learning from Abraham, which is so brilliant, is that it's so great to have the the breathing that you do be inspired, the deep breathing or the conscious breathing be inspired by movement. So if you can get out 
or or even if you can't, because I know winter's coming for for some people. That's that means a lot of indoors. Um, if you can't get out, um, you know there's yoga and things like that. But if you can get out and move your body, and ultimately the more physical contact you have with the planet, the better too. I I saw a video recently about how the, you know even science can measure the ions that are coming up from the earth that as, as we step mm. on the earth or lie on the earth to get, um, you know, the connection to the earth. So, so for yeah. me personally, what I like to do is I, I like to go and walk for hours, usually two <laughs> hours and barefoot is better. Um, but I, right. I pay attention to my breathing as much as I can. I try and make it a walking meditation. So so I think if you're if you're doing as much of those things as you can, as much organic, as much pure, you know, spring yes. or well or water, and as it, the more you can do, the better. You don't have to, you know, try and emulate someone else who's doing it to the extent that, say, I am, because I happen to have a life that allows me to do that and. Right, real and you blessed, you go hiking you know. you go hiking every day, right? I think you've mentioned yes, in a, so yes. So it, that's amazing. I've been going to the ocean though, so I've been actually oh, nice. doing beach walks um, instead of of hikes in the woods. But as soon as we get to Hawaii, I'm going to explore some of those um, forests on the Big Island for sure, and I'll have nice. that variety. Of you know, some days go to the beach, some days go to the o- mm, go to the I uh, love that. forest. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, uh, for sure, I have a good idea of um, your perspective on on embodying star energy on Earth because you certainly are connected with both aspects very much. And now, what I would like is to hear from the creators so that they also share their perspective about embodying. A star energy on Earth. So, yeah, do you feel time to prepare, or how how would that go? How would what go? Yeah, do you need time to prepare? Well, for I, no, it's just the three minutes of the overtones, and and the, you'll hear the word okay and the the word yes, and then they'll come in and they'll say we are here for you, and that's basically when you know it's creator's okay. time. But, um, nice. but those, those three minutes are, of, if, if those of you who are listening want to just sit back, relax, and get like a sound bath or a sound healing, mm. these nice. tones are filled with overtones which work on you multidimensionally. They're, you know, they're just, I had a client the other day, commenting on the overtones that were coming through when I was channeling Michael or the creators, I can't remember which one, but it was, um, you know, she was just really able to feel the the energy in each overtone. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think it's worth everyone's while just to, just to sit back and enjoy. Beautiful. And I want to remind our listeners, that you can call now for your question. And the phone number is, let me find it a moment. Oh, my goodness. Okay, 347-215-8586. And then just press 1 so that I know that you want to ask a question. Okay, so, Daniel, sound healing time. What's that? Sound healing time. Sound <laughs> healing time. Now you can start with your... <laughs> I'm just drinking some water. Like I said, it's um so important oh, yeah. for me to be hydrated. And I talk nice. and talk and talk when when you ask me one simple question, and now I'm like, <laughs> really <laughs> Speaking of the um, the earth and sky theme, it's really mm. it's interesting to me that I got like completely obsessed with Star Trek at a certain point oh. and had to watch. I watched three full um, Star
Star Trek series runs on Netflix, and now I'm I'm mm. like trying to find the net because the original one isn't really appealing to me, and the uh, Deep Space Nine is in a space station; they don't go anywhere. So, but it's just interesting mm-hmm. to me that like all of a sudden I get really interested in in space travel. Like I want to feel like I'm every night going on a spaceship, exploring these other worlds, and Star Trek has helped me do that. And that's one of the ways that I connect with the star realm. Oh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so all yours for your channeling. Okay, good. I just finished my water. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> I have a little dog <laughs> sitting next to me. I hope he doesn't howl. <laughs> Sometimes he howls when I when I do this, but we'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay, everyone, I'll talk to you uh, when the creators are done. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or- This is Victoria. Thank you for being here today. Yeah. It is our pleasure to connect with you and everyone else who is tuning in to this experience. Beautiful. So, first of all, I would like to know what you can share with us regarding embodying star energy on Earth. Very good. Simply put, you are all star beings who are incarnating on this particular planet and you are grounding that energy into the physical 
into the Ur experience. Because this time on your world is all about integration. So you have many different origins and you are seeded from all across the universe. And you have switches in your DNA that are being turned on, being activated at this time to make more and more of you interested in the stars, interested in your galaxy, your galactic history. As Daniel was saying before we came along to speak with you, he had a sudden interest. He had this inspired thought to start watching episodes of the show Star Trek. This is helping him to acknowledge and integrate different parts of himself that are represented by these other star systems and these other worlds and these other beings. So if you see your entire universe as nothing more than consciousness expressing itself and you hold that truth within your consciousness, then you can see that all of these different uh, star systems that you are hearing about now and that you are mm, finding more of an interest in, they are representing different aspects of consciousness. And since you all are expressions of all that is, expressions of source energy, you have all of these different aspects within you. And you get attracted to different star systems at different times because of what you are activating and integrating into your whole self so that you can be more whole, so that you can walk on this earth knowing who you are, accepting who you are, and feeling connected to all other beings, not feeling like you are just an earthling, and also not feeling like you belong somewhere else. So that is a sentiment that we are aware of uh, in many individuals who are seeking a spiritual path at this time. They identify more with the Pleiades or Sirius or uh, Arcturus or somewhere else. And they say, that is home. And that is where I am from. That is where I want to return to. And we say, that is an aspect of who you are, that you are grounding into this physical body. And in order to ground something into your physical body, first you must acknowledge that you have a physical body. And one of the ways that you do that is through a conscious experience of grounding yourself down to the soles of your feet, down to planet Earth, so that you recognize that you are here for a reason. You are physical and you are on planet Earth for a reason. And that reason is not to discover your true origin and to get in a spaceship and go there and uh, leave all this <laughs> behind because you would not have incarnated here if that was the ultimate goal for you, the ultimate goal being to be somewhere else and in the physical. Mm -hmm. You will have opportunities, of course, to travel, uh, to go to other star systems and 
uh, other planets and have your experiences that will be a part of your uh, human future. But it is not the reason why you are here at this time. You are here at this time to integrate all those different aspects of who you are that are represented by the stars and by the uh, other worlds and other systems. Mm. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. And before we... Before we continue, I know that we have a call here from area code 816 that has been there for a long time now. So I would like to get to that call and just a reminder that for anyone that wants to call in with questions, just call 347-215-8586 and then press the number one so that I know that you want to ask your questions. Okay, so area code A one six, you are in. Hello. Hi, Vic- hi Victoria. Hi. And creators. Hello, this is Philip. PBS. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! How are you? Hi. I'm excellent. Mm-hmm. I'm just standing on the earth and looking up at the sky right now as we speak. Mm. So. <laughs> and uh, um, thank. Thank you, creators, for what what you shared in that introduction there, which was exactly, basically mm. almost answered my quest, my exact question to the T that I wow. was wanted to talk about. Because, like yeah, a I, lot of other, I have never had much of a problem with the sky energy, with the <laughs> with the stars and all of that. I've been fascinated and intrigued and have had faith in all of that stuff for a long time, but I. I haven't done so well with the earth part. And I I think I'm starting to and I'm I'm very very sensitive um to to I'm having tons of synchronicity telepathy of uh, times where I just almost am brought to tears over something very small and these sen- these sensitivities and trying to deal with all of that going on at the same time stay grounded and stay to where I can actually support myself and play this game of this earth game and interact with other people and I, I'm having a I wouldn't say I'm having a hard time but with all of the wonderful stuff going on spiritually and the shifting that I feel taking place and my intuition getting stronger it still seems like I'm reluctant to really get out in the world and participate and um, make a living and just do those day-to-day things. Yes. And that's my question. (laughs) Well, Mm -hmm. what we recommend to you is that you be very patient with yourself, that you love yourself through this process of evolution that you are clearly on already, that you are aware of all this in the first place, is something to be quite proud of and to give yourself credit for, to be aware enough to know that you have these tendencies or these feelings about uh, what it is that you want to do in the world and how it is you want to participate in the world. And as you allow yourself to be there, as you allow yourself to be right where you are and look for um, reasons to uh, give yourself uh, as much time as you need, uh, give yourself as much nurturing as you need, to give yourself all of the um, love and acknowledgement that many of you have not received from others on the earth plane, and that is one of the reasons why you feel uh, that you want out or you want off. And because you have not received it from others, uh, that was part of your setup. That was one of the things that you decided for this incarnation 
would be most appropriate so that you would ultimately have to give it to yourself. So as you give yourself the love and the acknowledgement and the acceptance and everything else that you need, uh, you will find that it becomes easier for you to then be out in the world because you are not looking for someone else or you're not looking for something else to do it for you. Mm. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Oh, I love you guys. Victoria, Daniel, I love you and the too. creators. Yeah. I know. Love you. Thank you so Thank much you. for calling. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Bye. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. We're going to get one more call. This one is from area code 209. So 209, be ready. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Ray. Um, oh, nice and uh, I just want to say yes. I just want to say thank you so much to the uh, creators. Um, thank you so much. I had a, a, a great experience of of their energy here, of your energy. I uh, have a question regarding our origins. Those who are on this planet, and p- perhaps in general, and perhaps myself specifically, um, is Am I, or are we in general, each one of us, from multiple different, am I a fragment? Hello? Hello? We are here. It's okay. Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? Hello, go back again. Yes, can you hear us? Okay, so uh, creators, so do you have the question as it was stated to the extent that the caller was able to get it out? Yes. So in okay, I think it's back. Questions. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, yes. creators, but they, I think the person is here. Hello. Hi. Oh yeah, I'm is so sorry. Me? I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh okay. No no no. Uh, please continue your question. Okay. In- Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. So I just want to know if if I am a fragment of multiple different origins of different planets, uh, is, am I just from originally from one or multiple, uh, and I'm experiencing uh, an existence on this earth so that I know I would like to know I'm a universal person in my mind. My mind thinks I belong to the universe, it's more yes. than just one planet. And so I just want to confirm w- where this thought should be. Uh, am I from different sources uh, or, or one? Let us ask I you feel... a question first before we yes. give you our very lengthy answer. <laughs> Is there a particular star system that you feel a resonance with, that you feel attracted to? I'm attracted to two. Uh, first, I would say Pleiades, and yes. then also Ceres. But yes. Pleiades ca- captures me first. Yes, very good. Now, the reason why you feel that energetic harmony with those particular star systems is because beginning you at this time, those are the most active energies. So those star systems represent certain aspects of your consciousness, such as uh, the caring side, the nurturing side, the loving side, uh, the helper aspect of who you are, are represented very well within those star systems, and that is very active within you. That is something that you are stepping into. You are stepping into your role as a teacher at this time, and that is 
the reason why you feel the resonance with those particular star systems. Now, that does not mean that you are from there, because as you have so eloquently stated, you are the entire universe. You cannot be localized really in any real sense, although you do have a physical focus that is here on planet Earth uh, with the rest of the Earthlings. And from that perspective, from the life that you are leading, you are able then to tap into these different energetic signatures from these different uh, star systems. And so that is one of the things that makes planet Earth so unique and so special is that you do have a preponderance of energy here from other worlds represented right here in the dolphins and the whales and the dog and the cat and there are so many more that uh, we could go on and on because ultimately you have had many different uh, beings who have come from other star systems who have tinkered with this and that uh, on your world uh, for thousands and thousands of years to um, create this experience for consciousness, to create the experience that you are having right now where you are then able to see yourself in something else. You are able to detect that resonance with something outside of yourself so that you can once and for all, really understand on a visceral, human, physical level that you are all things. You are mm, created from uh, exploding stars. Uh, that is where your uh, physical stuff in, on this planet uh, originates from. And you have all these brothers and sisters out there who have donated so much of their DNA and their physical material to this world. And that gives you the opportunity to have this experience where you are integrating all these different energies. So right now for you, uh, Pleiadian and the Syrian energy is active. It is, it is up for you to integrate more of that in. But at another time, you may find that you are more uh, resonating with Andromedan or Arcturan energy, and that is perfectly fine because they have different um, essences. They have different energy signatures that you will then be integrating into your whole self because the idea here now is to be your whole self, which includes all the different aspects, all the different star systems, physical, non-physical, earth, sky, all of it, to be that physical representation of this idea that was once just an idea to all of you, that you are all things, that you are all that is, that everything is inside of you, that you are not just a small little speck on a blue dot somewhere out there in the galaxy. Wow. Wow. Mm. That, is, that is beautiful. I, that, 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 um, uh, that confirms uh, my my thought and my soul. I really appreciate that, and uh, that's beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. I do want to say specifically, I love you, wherever you are, however you are. Uh, I love you guys so much, the creators and uh, and all the all the higher kingdoms. I appreciate it. And uh, so. yeah, we love you as well, and we are that reflection to you, of course. Hmm. Thank you so much for calling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, that was beautiful. And you know, with that that you said about um other other collectives or other civilizations donating DNA to us, I would like to ask you, from your perspective, 
did we also, humanity, donate DNA to other um, galactic societies? Yes. Your DNA, the human uh, DNA, has been taken on spaceships and taken from this world to other parts of your galaxy to be uh, spliced together with uh, other uh, beings and their uh, DNA to create uh, hybrid beings uh, off this world as well. Yes. Hmm. Could you give us any further information on that? How is um, that process, what is bringing about? Well, it is very much like what you are coming to know, what your scientists are beginning to do with uh, their abilities to clone and to uh, map uh, genomes and uh, everything that you do uh, in your laboratories, uh, on a microscopic level, uh, those types of tools that are becoming part of your uh, human uh, skill set, that is precisely what these extraterrestrial beings had uh, at their disposal, those types of technologies and that type of equipment that was able then to uh, take a sample from a human and uh, use that uh, with their technology to put it together with DNA from their species and other species to create whatever they wanted to create. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. Yes. We, have, <laughs> we have one more question. Um, area code 910. Be ready. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Daniel. This is Debbie. Yes. Okay. I want to ask the creator, why isn't this information more well known? Um, I'm in the Deep South, and this is considered way out in left field. I actually had a preacher friend use me as an example of demonic influence because I thought it was in all of us. Yes. And I... well. You are experiencing that end of the spectrum. You are experiencing part of polarity. And polarities are a big part of your human experience, especially in this universe that you have that is based on uh, the ideas of uh, right and left and up and down and hot and cold and all the different polarities that you have. So when another has that perspective, when another is holding that perspective that uh, this is wrong, this is bad, this is evil, uh, this information is not only not true, but it is uh, demonic and detrimental to all who come in contact with it, that perspective must be allowed to exist within the polarities uh, in order for the opposite end of the spectrum to also exist. So, we will agree with you that for thousands of years now, that perspective of that gentleman has been the more dominant perspective on your world. But we will say that more and more now than ever are waking up and there is more information now because of your internet and your movies and your television programs that are incorporating this type of information. Now, sometimes it comes to you in sneaky ways, like through science fiction shows. So you watch a science fiction show and you think that that was a nice story that they were telling about aliens and all that, and, and you do not realize necessarily that the reason why that particular show uh, called you and spoke to you and resonated with you is because that information needed to be activated within you so that you could 
uh, harmonize with it so that you could integrate it so that you could get that activation within you of that particular energy. So uh, it is getting in more and more. And like we were saying to Philip about himself, we ask that all of you just be patient with yourselves, be patient with humanity, be patient with those who are clinging to the old way because they are there for a reason. They need to hold down that polarized point of view. Somebody has to hold it. And uh, they do not need to be fixed or changed, or, uh, n- and neither do you, neither does anyone else. But you have the awakened consciousness to know that. And by knowing that, you allow the other to be where he is. You allow him to hold that perspective, and you bless him. You have compassion for him. You hold a state of unconditional love for him. Because that is the only way that you will have a positive effect on those who are suffering in their holding down of that end of the spectrum, that polarized experience. Hmm. Beautiful. Do you feel your question is answered? Uh, Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you so much for calling. Yes. Okay, so, well, we we have to start closing up because it's already past seven. Um, So just one more question, which is any message that you have for all of us of how you see our future when we embody the the energy from the stars fully and we embody the energy from the earth fully, what do you see for us? Well, truly, the sky is the limit for you. And Hmm. what that expression means is that uh, there is no limit uh, to where humanity can go. And we will say that humanity has made it this far in your evolution and because you have made it this far because you have made the decisions that you have made collectively this is a very good sign for where you are headed so what embodying the star energy into your physical being and what grounding your energy in your physical being and being connected to the earth, what that does for you is it simply makes the journey easier for you. Because as we said, you are already on this journey that has no end, that has no limitations. And because you are going further and further into the higher frequencies because that is your birthright because that is happening whether you are grounded or not. That is happening. All that we give you, all that other guides are giving you right now are the keys to having a more enjoyable experience of the shifting consciousness, a more enjoyable experience of your evolution, and your ultimate uh, launching of your consciousness out beyond planet Earth and into the stars. So everything that uh, Daniel mentioned earlier when asked about what you can do, what he would recommend people can do, all of those things that you can do simply make the transition easier. It makes you mm, able to process more energy. It helps uh, the energy to move through you in a cleaner and clearer way with less distortion and less blockage. And that is what we are here to do. That is what all teachers are here to teach. It is not that your evolution rests upon your shoulders and your willingness to do the right thing. 
it is that you are evolving and that you can have an enjoyable, easy experience of the evolution of your consciousness or you can make it harder on yourselves by clinging to the old ways and to clinging to that which no longer serves you. So that is our recommendation to you is to recognize what serves you and to be easy with yourselves, be gentle with yourselves, allow yourselves to be exactly where you are and to enjoy the journey that you are on. Beautiful. Thank you so much, creators. It's wonderful yeah. speaking with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's our pleasure. Okay. So I look forward to our next encounter. And now I would like to call Daniel in. <laughs> yeah. We will give him back to you. <laughs> we thank you for the opportunity to uh, strut our stuff here on your show and uh, to connect with all of your listeners. We appreciate mm, thank greatly you. Thank the work you that you and others are doing on your world. Mm, thank you. Okay, that was wonderful. So, Daniel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you feeling? So good. Oh, nice. Did you yeah. follow the conversation or... Yeah. Did yeah. you go very fast? Was, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm fully present and uh, oh. following along with the whole thing, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So I want to remi- remind our listeners that your website is danielscranton.com. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, yeah, so that... Everybody that wants to continue working with you and listening to your videos, because I know that you have a lot of videos, right? Yeah, I produce basically a video a day, except when I'm oh traveling and, and somehow unable to. Um, the videos uh, are also in written form, so you can subscribe on my website to mm. just get the emails every day. That um, it's you know it's usually one email a day. <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, nice. of a quote from the creators or Archangel Michael or the Hathors or Ophelia or wow. the Unicorns or whoever. Whoever I'm, I'm channeling in the moment, I do a quote every mm. day. I put it on, on my Facebook and, you know, you can follow me on Facebook too, um, my website, you know, YouTube. The, I, I put the the quotes into uh, video form with, with basically just the audio and a picture so there's Beautiful. lots of different ways to get that. A lot know, of contribution. That. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much, Daniel, for being here today. So beautiful talking with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I, I love your little laugh and your accent and oh. your, your <laughs> bubbly energy. It's, it's oh. wonderful. It's <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I look forward <laughs> to meeting with you in person because we have been chatting uh, through yeah. email, through um, through phone, and all of that. But you know, the day that we all meet in person, all the enlightenment, evolution, ever that's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to that too. Okay, well, so okay. I will talk to you next time, Daniel. Thank you once again. Yes, and. Thank you. <laughs> And next week, we have a very special guest. His name is Sasha Stone from New Earth Nation. Sasha has been working on projects to bring unity to humankind since 1999. He is actively supporting people on creating intentional communities so that people can live in harmony and freedom. So all the details for this outstanding show will be available at victoriavides.com forward slash radio. So check that out. And now the an- announcements. As you know, this show is part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, and you can find metaphysic shows every day in the Enlightenment Evolution Network and Enlightenment Evolution Network 2, which is this one. And every host in the network has a donation link. So if you want to contribute to us, feel free to do so. 
We also have tons of meditations and classes, so that's another way in which we can contribute to you while you contribute to us too. Okay, so I'm going to share with you about each of the shows that we have in the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Tomorrow, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Rob Gaffier, the creator of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, will be hosting the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Rob offers channeling and meditation classes available at threadchanneling.com. On Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Philip Malika will be hosting Consciousness Evolution Hour, all things metaphysical from the perspective of the fifth dimension, the shift, fifth dimensional living, relationships, channelings, non-physical and off-world energies, and much more. On Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, the Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, exploring our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. And that is on Friday, and now we get to Saturday, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and 8 a.m. Pacific Time, Odyssey of Ascension with Roxanne Swinghart, two hours of mind-bending ascension downloads. On Sunday is About Oneness, which is running at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And also she, um, Karen, will be having a guest, a special guest, Carolyn Hart. And this is going to be October 5th, which actually is my birthday. <laughs> so that will be on October 5th. And Monday is the show of Daniel Scranton, our guest today. His show is Earth to Earth. Uh, Sorry, Heart to Heart Radio <laughs> at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And Daniel and his future guests will discuss topics such as the shift, it is channeling, energy work, toning, and sound healing. So check that out for sure. And Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time is Soulpreneur, radio inspiration, expression, abundance, a spiritual business specialist, Rachel Archelaus and Megan Crandall-Meyer, with guests who are living their sole purpose so that we feel inspired. And back to Tuesday evening, this show, Earth Sky People, with yours truly, Victoria Vines. And my special guest will be Sasha Stone. So with this said, <laughs> I look forward to connecting with you again know that I love you very much, and let's continue that interconnectedness. Okay, bye. Will you still growing up, thinking that we are separated, but we are one? Will you still growing up, thinking that we stand on our own, but we Humankind is one soul, expanding like rays from 
Where you still going on? 